Hello and welcome to WVU Medicine Tuesday Talks. I'm your host, Mary Ravazio Menard. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. An estimated 297,790 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in the U.S. this year, according to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. It's estimated more than 100,000 U.S. women undergo some form of mastectomy, the removal of one or both breasts, each year. So what happens after mastectomy? Today, we're talking about one post-mastectomy option, microsurgical breast reconstruction surgery with WVU Medicine plastic surgeon, Dr. Majed Malouf. Welcome, Dr. Malouf, to Tuesday Talks. Thank you, thank you. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. So let's start with what is microsurgery? Well, it's uh, one way uh, we use to reconstruct the breast. Microsurgery consists of taking tissue from an area of the body and then taking the blood vessels, an artery and a vein, and connecting, connecting these vessels to the vessels in the chest area and shaping the tissue in a way to give the shape of a breast. In, so in summary, it's taking tissue from area that is far from the chest mm -hmm. and connecting the tissue, the vessel, the artery and the vein to the vessels in the chest. And this new tissue will survive in the chest area. Wow. So you're, you're, you're reconstructing the breast with tissue from other parts of the that body. They are correct. From parts, from areas that are far enough from the chest, whether it can be the abdomen, it can be the lower extremities, or it can be the lower back area. And this is a very delicate procedure, isn't it? It is. It's especially because you have to look at the very fine, very small vessels that usually the size of a hair, and you have to connect these vessels and put them together once you go to the chest area. And the what is delicate is you take this tissue from an area of the body without taking muscles so that you will have minimal deformity where you take the tissue from. Okay. And it's my understanding if you take it from the abdominal area, it's also like getting a tummy tuck too. Absolutely mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. Like people who have excess skin along the abdominal area, we take the tissue from the abdomen we preserve the muscle and then we dissect the small vessels between the muscle fibers. Then we close the abdomen in a aesthetically pleasing way and then we take this tissue, put it in the chest and this will give the shape of a breast. Wow, that's amazing. So it's a delicate procedure. So I imagine this is a, this is a longer surgery. This isn't something you can just Correct. This yeah. is the procedure mm -hmm. where you cannot do three or four a day. It's, it's, a, it's a lengthy procedure. It, as well, the uh, timing depends whether you're doing one breast or you're doing two breasts, whether you're doing it at the same time of the mastectomy or doing it at a later time. And the average, it's usually something between six and eight, nine hours, depending on how complex. The, uh, how complex the, di you know, finding these vessels, because sometimes the vessels are not always the same. So right. some cases may be different. Some cases may be faster than usual. Some cases may be longer than usual. But as a goal part, you know, big part, it's uh, around six to eight, nine hours, depending okay. if it's one breast or two breasts. Okay. So you could have a mastectomy and microsurgical breast reconstruction at the same time, or you can have them as separate procedures. Absolutely correct. Yeah, <clears throat> we here at WVU, we do, we do both types of reconstruction. We can do it at the same time of a mastectomy. We can do reconstruction using your own tissue and microsurgical reconstruction, whether using tissue from the abdomen or other areas of the body. It can be done at the same time of the mastectomy or it could be done at a later time. And how we decide what procedure, I mean the timing depends on it's a patient specific, depending if additional treatment is required and the patient conditions. Okay. 
So what is the recovery like from uh, this procedure? Uh, most of the time, the patient will be in the hospital between two and three days. Okay. So if you have your surgery today, uh, you'll be in a hospital tomorrow and the day after. Sometime we can release you home at that day or you can be released third day after your admission. Okay, and then what is the recovery like after recovery, that? Recovery, I would say, uh, in approximately between two and three weeks, you should be almost pretty much back to normal with all the tubes that we placed during the surgery have been removed, and all the wounds should be healed by that time. Okay. Um, who is a good candidate for microsurgical breast reconstruction? The what, how we decide whether to offer microsurgery or not to a patient. First, we want to be sure that the patient can be put under general anesthetic for long periods of time, for six, seven hours without having cardiac problems or lung problem or kidney problems. Okay. So any patient who is fit to undergo long surgeries could be a good candidate. Any patient who has excess skin that we can remove safely is always a good candidate. And any patient who, would rec who asks for breast reconstruction using their own tissue, as long as there is no contraindication, we should be able to provide that to the patient. We do have a system where we assess the patients and we have a criteria for someone to be included in the, uh, uh, you know, we call this uh, autologous breast reconstruction or doing a breast reconstruction using your own tissue, using microsurgical free flap transfer. Okay. So what would you say are the main benefits of microsurgical breast reconstruction surgery? Uh, I would say the main benefit, uh, one, is that you have your own tissue. It feels more natural. Uh, it grows with you. If you gain weight, your breast will become bigger. If you lose weight, your breast will become uh, smaller. Really? The other benefit as well, yes. Mm -hmm. The other benefit is you are taking tissue from an area where you have excess uh, tissue. That means we will improving the contour of the area where you're removing the excess skin. Uh, you don't need maintenance for it, like an implant. Like if, as long as all the wounds heal, then this will be your own. You do not need to have regular and routine follow-up to check if there is any problem with your, with your free flap, which is different than if you have an implant, which you have to do follow-ups and imaging and testing to see if there is a problem with the implant, whether implant rupture, whether a leak of a silicone mm, yeah. or saline, depending on the type mm -hmm. of implant, whether there's a problem with capsular contraction. Oh, okay. So um, what would you say then are the, the risks of this procedure? The major risk of the surgery, sometime when you take tissue and then you connect it under, under the microscope, connect the vessels. These are very small, tiny vessels. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the vessels may not connect well and we may have problem with the flap surviving. And as well, there is a major risk, which is the risk of being put under for six and seven hours. So we have to always weight the risk of putting someone under for a long period of time in the OR than doing a quick surgery. Okay. Um, I'm sure a lot of women would want to know, does the reconstructed breast feel natural? And will you have feeling in it? Correct. It does. It does mm -hmm. feel natural. It's your own tissue. It's just it feels natural. It's your own tissue. It grow, as we said before, it grows with you. It, if you lose weight or you, uh, you gain weight, uh, the sensation depend, depends on if we're connecting the nerves or not. Sometimes with these type of microsurgical reconstruction, we can connect nerve as well to the nerves in the chest. This may increase the feelings and the sensation of the reconstructed breast. But most of the time, we, most of the patient will gain some type of sensation and nerves would grow back. Okay. But there is a way for someone who would like to have additional sensation, then we can do nerve grafts as well. 
And this is, once you have this done, this is, this is good for the rest of your life. I know like yes. with implants, sometimes you have to go back in. Or... Correct. Yeah, with this one, no. Just you do it. If, as long as there is no problem initially, you should be good. Okay. Good to know. Um, so do you think this procedure, because like you were talking about how natural it mm -hmm. looks and feels, do you think it... It helps patients not have that daily reminder that oh, oh, I had cancer. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then in some patients, definitely the uh, using your own tissue does look better than having an implant. It as well gives you the uh, the confidence uh, to you look. Most of the people will look very natural and close. So mm -hmm. it does absolutely. It does make it does make a big difference. All right. Now this is an important question here. Do most insurances cover this surgery? Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, there is a Women's Health and Cancer Right Act in 1998, which provides protection for individual who uh, had a, uh, to have a breast reconstruction after having a mastectomy. And all health, health insurances would provide coverage for reconstruction, whether done at the same time of the mastectomy or whether done at a later time. And it does cover as well having a symmetric procedure performed on the normal breast. Oh, okay. Whether now or later, whether putting an implant on a normal breast, whether doing a, uh, you know, reduction mm -hmm. or doing a lift for the normal breast. So that law, and this was passed in 1998. 1998, that is correct. Wow. Yes. It's been around a long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if a lot of, well, I'm, I'm sure there's aware, more awareness now, but... I mean, that's a mandate. Your insurance company can't say no. No, no. Mm -hmm. and then we still we still get these questions a lot. We have just a lot of patient comes and ask, is this covered? And then we have to tell them, yes, there was an act passed in 1998 that that all women have that right. That is correct. Yes. Well, that's that's really good to know. So let's talk a little bit about the expertise mm -hmm. of the team yeah. of WVU Medicine plastic surgeons sure. to not only perform cutting-edge procedures like microsurgical mm -hmm. breast reconstruction, yes. but many other we procedures. Do, we do perform mm -hmm. all type of breast reconstruction uh, and all type of uh, revisional surgery as well. We perform a lot of fat grafting. We perform a lot of uh, uh, doing a breast lift or breast reduction at the same time of a uh, mastectomy or at the same time of uh, removing part of the breast. We do as well, not all flaps we do are free flap. We do a lot of local flaps, which means that we take tissue from the area that is close to the breast and then we turn it over to give a breast mount without having to connect things under the microscope. Oh, okay. That means that this is a, a faster procedure, less risky because it has less sore time. Okay. There is no risk to have problem with the flap because it's still connected to the uh, native uh, feeding vessel. Okay. And there is as well some patients who are candidates for that, others are not, and then we do provide all that. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. So. What's the most important thing you want our viewers to know about microsurgical breast reconstruction surgery? We'd like them to know that we provide this service here at WVU and then uh, it's, uh, it's available. It's available to everyone who is a good candidate and to whoever we think uh, would benefit from it. And uh, so. Okay, good to know, all right. Well, thank you so much uh, thank you for, for sharing me. this information. Absolutely. Thank you. And reminding you. everybody, your insurance company has to cover it. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. All right, thank you so much. That brings us to the end of this edition of Tuesday Talks. If you're looking for more information about breast cancer, you can always visit wvumedicine.org slash cancer. And join us on next Tuesday, the next Tuesday Talks on October 24th when we'll talk about a new central sleep apnea treatment with Dr. Sunil Sharma, Chief of WVU Medicine Pulmonary Critical Care and Sleep Medicine. I'm Mary Ravazio Menard, and on behalf of Dr. Malouf and everyone at WVU Medicine, thanks for joining us.